there is just so much stuff in here. Each week I aim to make at least three meals from what we already have on hand. And then I try and stock up based off of what's on sale. And that leaves me with an ever full pantry, seemingly overflowing with lots of food for my family. Today I'm showing you three meals that I made with zero dollars based on what I already had on hand. I always get started by updating my inventory. So I've printed out my stick to your budget checklist. I laminated it and then I just delete or like erase the things that I don't have anymore that I used in this past week. And then I update it with anything that I purchased that is new. Next, I write, like to write out a big list of things that come to mind, meals that come to mind based off of what I already have. So we're just gonna kind of spitball together. I'm thinking like there's chicken pad thai because I have those rice noodles. There's also like sriracha shrimp bowls. I'm probably gonna spell that wrong, but this is for me, so it's okay. I was thinking like uh, chicken with stuffing in the crock pot. I have like pepperoncinis and um, like some au jus and I was thinking of doing like um, Mississippi chicken. I've got those like mini corns that I've been wanting to use. So that would be like maybe like a fried rice or, um, or maybe even just like a stir fry. I could do chicken curry because I have some curry sauce. Then there's just like ribeyes. One thing I really like about Good Chop is that I get these like nicer cuts of meat so I can have that like on a Friday or like something. And if I go to the butcher, it's very expensive and I end up like spending on other things. So it's nice that these nicer cuts of meat arrive straight to my house and then I can just defrost them when I'm ready to have them. And then I'm also not like tempted by the other delicious things at the butcher because I admit that I'm not the best at that. So what I'm opening here is the $99 package and you can get so much meat for this price. I mean, when I go to the butcher alone, it's always $99. So this is multiple days and really like a month's worth of uh, meat that I can keep in my freezer and then pull out for these meals. That bacon is so delicious. This Gulf shrimp, funny story. The other day I grilled up some shrimp and it was absolutely delicious. It was some good chop shrimp. And my husband's like, I don't know about shrimp, not the flavor, but like just shrimp in general. He's like, it's farmed. Da, da, da. And I was like, no, this is not farmed shrimp. Like we're eating good chop shrimp. This is wild caught. This is good stuff. Same thing with the sockeye salmon, wild caught sockeye salmon. So you're not having anything that's farmed. No matter what your preference is, Good Shop has something for you with 60 plus high quality cuts of meat. They have grass fed meats. Everything is sourced from the USA. So you're supporting local family farms, independent ranchers right here in the US. These steaks are phenomenal. So I just love controlling what I'm purchasing, making sure that I'm getting high quality meats directly to my doorstep and making sure that my freezers are always full. So I really want to thank Good Shop for sponsoring today's video. You can go to goodshop.com slash YouTube and use code Maria120 or click the link in the caption below to get $120 off across your force four boxes today. Go to goodshop.com slash YouTube and use code Maria120 or click the link in the caption below to get $120 off your first four boxes today. Like I said, this stuff is good enough to have on your anniversary. I'll be showing you this recipe later, so stay tuned. Got New York strip steaks. I have tortellini, but like, I don't really know, like I don't have cream or anything. I could try like a brothy tortellini soup, but I don't have sausage. So something to think about, like something to use, but no, maybe I don't have everything on hand to make it. Lots of canned chicken. I could do like a chicken tortilla soup. I do have some ground chicken and then that um, taco kit so I can do ground chicken tacos or I also want to use the ground chicken to do like a ramen dish. There's also like poor man burrito bowls. I also have stuff I could do lasagna. Again, these are all things like these one, two, three things that I could use with the ground chicken, but I only have one pound of ground chicken so I'd have to decide, you know, what I want to actually make. But I feel like this is a pretty solid list and I'm going to kind of decide what I want to do. So when meal planning, I always say to be realistic. And a lot of times that just means planning around the time that you have. So the next couple of days are pretty busy for me. And I'm thinking crock pot meals are going to be my best bet. So I'm thinking I'm actually going to do the chicken with stuffing. Tuesday, I'll do the Mississippi chicken. Wednesday is actually my anniversary. And that's the great thing about having good chops. So I'm going to take out some of those New York strip steaks. And we are actually going to go out on Friday. And so I'll probably either grab a take and go pizza or like um, have my in-laws order pizza because they're going to watch the kids and we're going to go out to dinner for our anniversary. But on our anniversary, we can have something special. So we'll do New York strip. And then I do have some like 
lobster raviolis that I got for $2.50. And I didn't have a plan for them. I just was like, this is such a good sale. I'm going to buy them. So I'm thinking maybe serve that with it. That would be pretty decadent for, for our anniversary. Thursday, we're going to the state fair. So that'll be fair food. Saturday and Sunday, I'm still going to figure out. But here it is. These are our $0 dinners. Based on stuff I already have, let me show you how we make them. The first recipe is this chicken and stuffing with green beans dish. So I'm using three quarters of a cup of Greek yogurt instead of sour cream because that's just what I have. And I find that they're pretty interchangeable. And you want one can of cream of mushroom soup and a third a cup of water. I'm gonna give this a good stir and kind of make this sauce. And I've got about four chicken breasts here, put those in the bottom of the crock pot. I'm gonna season those generously with salt and pepper. Then I have my stuffing. And you only want about a six ounce box of stuffing mix, so I used half. This bag is actually 12 ounces. Then you just wanna pour all of that sauce right over the top. And I've seen people use frozen green beans before, but today I have canned, so I just drain these off. A little bit of juice in them. That will help. It's actually part of what is gonna reconstitute the stuffing. And we're just gonna put the cover on this and cook it on high for four hours. Now this is a moment because look how bubbly and delicious this is. <laughs> this is awesome. It's very much like a, I don't know, like a Thanksgiving-y type meal with the stuffing. I would have loved to have some like cranberry sauce on the side. And I think if I were to do it again, which I definitely will, I'm going to use two cans of the cream of mushroom because I would love to have kind of like a lot more of the gravy type stuff or even like do like turkey or chicken gravy on the side. Um, tons of flavor here. I just would have liked a little bit um more juiciness i guess and the kids wanted to give their input too so here they are three out of five that's a three out of five yeah. stop copying me he doesn't mean that he said it's a five out of five stop copying me he he said it's a five out of five so in classic fashion, I'm going to change my mind and we're going to do a ground chicken tortellini bake instead of the Mississippi chicken. I also have all of this on hand. Some of this would have lasted. Um, the chicken I wanted to use though, and then I'm just going to, the other chicken is still going to be good till the end of the week. So we'll just kind of move some things around. But sometimes I just want to change up like based on the day. Like I was like, I'm not feeling Mississippi chicken. So we're going to come up with another option, which actually wasn't even on my initial list, but... I just uh, thought of tortellini and decided I want to do that. I just want to start by browning up your chicken. I'm also getting some water boiling because we're going to cook up that tortellini. And to that brown chicken, you want to add about a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of cr fresh cracked pepper, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of oregano. I have like a handful of fresh basil, but you could use about a half a teaspoon of dried basil as well. And then once all of that chicken is mixed up, I'm gonna add in a full 24 ounce can of pasta sauce, heat that all the way through, and then add in about a cup of ricotta cheese. I think this would also be good if you use like cottage cheese. You wanna turn that heat down when you add that ricotta. And then I'm adding in about three quarters of a cup of like shredded mozzarella, so it's gonna be super cheesy. And then my Tortellini will be cooked up. So whatever type of tortellini you have will be fine. And just cook that up. And then you want to pour that in there with a little bit of that pasta water, maybe like quarter cup max. Just kind of mix everything together. This is going to be delicious as it is. Um, but I'm actually going to be out this evening. So it's going to be perfect for me to kind of, I'm just going to keep it right into, in this, in this pot pan and add about another like three quarters of a cup of shredded cheese over the top. And then when my husband gets home and I'm actually going to leave, he can broil that mozzarella or even just cook it at 350 for like 20 minutes until it gets soft and soft until it melts. It's a delicious, cheesy Italian tortellini dinner. This was a huge win. The kids went back for seconds. Like they loved it. I do try and make things that are a little bit more kid friendly um, when I'm not around just to make things easier on my husband. When there's two of us there to be like, you got to eat it. We're better off uh, if there's just one, you know, it's a little harder. So for dinner tonight, we are going to have New York strip steak with blue cheese and then some Maine lobster ravioli. And you're going to be like, how is this a zero dollar dinner? Well, I'll tell you how. We have these delicious New York strip steaks from Good Chop. These are fabulous. I'm going to season them with some Auntie Nono's Steakhouse seasoning. We're going to grill them up on our Traeger pellet grill, but you can use whatever your favorite grill is. It's just so nice to have this meat 
on hand in the freezer for a special occasion without having to go out and buy something special. I grabbed these lobster raviolis on special at our local grocery store when they were on sale. I kid you not, for $2.50. I was like, lobster ravioli? All of the different flavors were $2.50. So I just snagged them. I knew they were going to be good till October. So I was like, we have plenty of time. I'll, I'll figure out what I'm going to do with them. <laughs> this was it. I'm like, this is perfect for our anniversary. And luckily, I had some blue cheese. So we're going to crumble that over here. And then I'm just going to cook the lobster ravioli up with some butter and just a little bit of shredded Romano cheese. Now, I have to admit that maybe because it was my anniversary, I kind of failed to get all of the steak um, cooking on camera, even the pasta. Uh, but I just seasoned this with that Auntie Nono's Steakhouse seasoning. Dan cooked this on our grill at like the highest temperature. I think it was like 500 degrees for about four minutes on each side absolute perfection like we're usually um ribeye people and this in particular was i think it's better than ribeye <laughs> i don't know how that's possible uh, we just put some blue cheese on there at the end to kind of melt that up and i simply cooked those raviolis and then i just warmed some butter put that over with romano cheese it's that simple we had an amazing amazing meal but you can have basically a zero dollar you know anniversary dinner i didn't have to go out to the butcher or anything like that i had everything i needed on hand to really have a special time so don't forget to get your own steak and much more Go to goodchop.com slash YouTube and use code Maria120 or click the link in the caption below to get $120 off your first four boxes today. So if you're curious about the fair, I did kind of want to show what a New Hampshire country fair looks like. Uh, this was the giant pumpkin contest. <laughs> These are massive. Uh, just lots of tractors. My kids love tractors. <laughs> My husband buys and sells tractors. It's a thing we do. Uh, pizza cones. Do not know what those are, but looked really interesting. Uh, kids loved the cows and they're always very interested in the otters and all of that. Julian really enjoys milk and I was like, that is where your milk comes from. He's like, what? And of course, the most exciting part of the night when the kids get to go on the rides, that's pretty much what they're there for. To learn more about my stick to your budget checklist and how we save money each week on food, click on this video and make sure the next time you're on YouTube, you're watching Meals with Maria.